the program. I am in a little bit different position today. I just, I woke up, there's a bit more energy. I was reading last night. I was conversing with a ton of people. I've kind of cranked up what I'm doing with working with you guys. I had calls with uh, one of my mentors yesterday, a guy that I've worked with that's done, geez, he's done a little over a hundred million now. I've talked with another guy that uh, I've done digital marketing with, helped him with his digital marketing. He's a real estate investor. For those of you guys that want to know if this funnel works for real estate, yes, it does. It works real well. If you're investors and you want to know if this will work to sell this program and get leads for investing, yes, it works exceptionally well. Anyway, I was talking with him, talking with some of you guys, looking at different things. Over the course of the next 60 days, I've said this, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown. We are going through a training, a series of trainings that's going to help you become more efficient and run your days better. Hopefully improve yourself, improve your health, and improve your business. Now, some of you during this time are going to be launching your business for the very first time. Some of you have launched before and you're just trying to get some traction going. Some of you are kind of beginning that process already and we want to create momentum. Wherever you're at in that process, if you take advantage of what we're doing, there's help to be had. There's training that's going to be beneficial. And what got me kind of fired up last night and as I was talking today with some people, there is this feeling for some reason that, well, if I'm doing this, I've got to lessen that. I've got, if I'm going to be working harder, this is going to be a struggle for me or my health is going to you know, have to suffer along with it. I'm going to end up, I know I'm going to end up putting on weight or I'm not going to sleep or I'm going to be extra stressed or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And really, it's because we live in this world of win-loss and where we think if we are going to do something, something else has to suffer. If I'm going to get a raise or if, if Sally Joe got a raise at work, she got a raise. And so it means I don't have extra money. If they do this, you know, life isn't guys, a, a, it's a game in a way, but it's not poker. Poker is one of those games where you sit down at the table and the most you can win is what everybody else has. And the only way you win what everybody else has is if they lose. Well, life isn't really set up that way. You know, whether you believe in God or, or a great creation or you don't believe in that at all, the universe isn't set up to where if you gain something, it's destroyed from somebody else's life. In your life, if you gain financially, it doesn't mean that spiritually or emotionally or in your relationships or physically that you have to suffer. It doesn't mean that at all. And that's where a lot of you guys are kind of feeling a little overwhelmed or you're struggling. And that's why a lot of people, when they start to get a little more efficient, they start to do things a little bit better. They add to it almost because they assume you think I've got to be busy. There are some myths involved in productivity and in efficiency. And we need to look at everything when it comes to that world and, and look at bettering ourselves. Because if you don't, you're going to struggle. See, we live in a day and age where more wealth is available, more success is available, more financial health. It, and, and physical health is available than at any other time in, in history. People live longer and people do live better. Now we can, you know, debate that all day long, but, you know, it's, it's a silly debate. And, and I know we've got in, an international group here. We've got people from all over the world. And so I'm going to take just a second to, um, not out of pride guys, but to speak to some of um, those here in, in North America, simply because, I think we take too much for granted when it comes to what we have and what we have available from all sorts of different, there's been craziness. And, and when you listen to the mainstream media, I, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. All there is, is this negativity and how bad things are and how rough it all is. Well, look, the world's going through changes, but I don't think I'd rather live in any other time in history. I, you know, you've got more opportunity now to do good and be better than previous generations. And you're in a position, many of you are in a position to provide that same thing for the generations to come, to allow them to live a better life. And I know some of you guys are doing this as a form of legacy for your kids or your grandkids. So now's the time to take advantage of it. Now, everywhere in the world, you guys have that opportunity on every continent. And a big part of that is because of this internet thing and the opportunity we have to work no matter where we are and generate, you know, a, a result, no matter what our, our upbringing is, you know, 
the internet's a great equalizer, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you grew up. It doesn't matter what language you speak. You can do some amazing things. So if you're struggling right now to figure out why you can't get more efficient or why you're overwhelmed, there's a couple of things that we're going to be going over over the course of the next few weeks. Please, please apply them to your life and get yourself and your priorities in check so that you can create a clear vision for yourself. Okay. Um, this is something where you can increase your business while you get better physically, you get healthier, you can sleep more and improve your relationships all at the same time. That's a bold claim, but I 100% stand behind it. If you guys are willing to do the work, all of that can happen all at the same time. You just need to be aware of what you're doing every single day. Be clear with yourself during this process. Is that cool? Everybody on board with that? All right, I'm going to sit back down. I'm going to get off of my soapbox. We'll come back to reality here. And here we go. Get my props out of the way. All right. I got a couple of things to share here. Okay. So this is kind of a quick rundown. This is what we're doing over the next little bit, guys. Um, rest of 2021. This is what we're going to look at doing. Okay. Creating a schedule works for you. Mastering the hard things. Priority list, worksheet, health, business, personal growth. I've started giving you some of the, the items in here. I'm going to be adding more. Again, guys, when, when you're in here, all you need to do is you can right click on these things and you can make a copy for yourself down here. You can, if I hit make a copy, it will make a copy in my own Google Drive, right? So I don't have to do this because this is mine. But if you are in this folder and you right click, you can make a copy, right? I'm not giving you permission to share it, I'm getting, but you can make a copy for yourself. Right. So some of you guys are asking permission to share and do other stuff or to, to edit. That's not what it is. Make yourself a copy here. Is that clear with everybody? Or you can just come in, open it and print it if you've got a printer, if you want to do it that way. So here's stuff we're doing. We're going to go over health over the next couple of weeks. We're going to get your business on track um, with content calendars and content challenges, personal study focus um, and you know getting um, into personal efficiency. So. Tomorrow, we're going to review some of these. I want to make sure you guys are set here priority-wise because um, I'm going to be giving you the initial calendar for content. Some of you guys may not be ready to start sharing all of the content. That's okay. You can still become a little more active on Facebook and start to do a little bit more, which will end up helping you in the long run. Okay. If you do not yet have one, everybody here should have a Facebook account. Some of you still don't have one. Please go get one, right? Okay, next, real quick, kind of going along the lines of what I was talking about earlier. There's a couple of myths about personal efficiency that you guys need to be aware of. These are prevalent throughout society. Busy does not equal productive, guys. Busy does not equal productive. Multitasking is a must, is another myth that is just ludicrous and working from home is less efficient. All three of those are missed. If you believe any one of those three, you're going to struggle over the course of the next 60 days and over the course of the rest of this business. Okay? Um, one of the reasons people struggle is because they get busy being busy, not being productive. And you need to be busy being productive. There is Pareto's law, the 80-20 rule, right? 20% of your efforts will produce 80% of your results. The same thing holds true here. There are things that you can do that will generate more results than if you're just doing it separately. Please do what you need to do to be productive. Um, the, the other one, what was multitasking? Look, <laughs> science, science shows that most of us now have the attention of a, a goldfish, less of an attention span than a goldfish does. The goldfish has an attention span of about eight, eight seconds. Most of us have an attention span of even less than that. That's why half of you guys keep your cameras off because, you know, you don't want to get into, you know, the fact that you've either fallen asleep or you're looking somewhere else. Look, when, when we try and multitask, you drop your efficiency, you get less done and the quality of the work suffers. 
Okay. So don't multitask as much. And then the last one, working from home, you can absolutely be productive working from home, but you need to create the right space. So a couple of things. Here's what you're going to get today. I'm going to go over three key things, but I'm going to give you later on today, I'm going to upload into the Google Drive, 10 things that can help you make, help make you more productive. You've got to decide which elements of this will be best for you, right? All of you are a little bit different. There is no one size fits all training that fits 100% of everything that you need. So you need to kind of work on that. Number one, one, so I'm going to give you three right now. And then I'm going to give you the document a little bit later on today. So you can study. I want you to kind of think about where you're at. Number one, as you're going through this, we have goals and we have tasks. You need to set yourself reasonable tasks each day. Too many times um, people will set a, a goal for themselves or a task for the day. They mistakenly identify it as a goal. And then at the end of the day, because they've set themselves too many goals in their mind, they set too many goals for the day. They don't achieve them. So they get themselves frustrated. So the next day they create an even longer list to get stuff, more stuff done, plus the stuff they they didn't get done. And it creates a losing environment for you. Understand the difference between goals and tasks. Part of the reason we have the, um, the group is so that you can share daily some of the things that you got done right? Hold yourself accountable, but celebrate some of those little achievements. I got this done. Check. I posted my first video. I did my first whatever. I got this done. I got that done. Post those. Create the accomplishment list just as much as you create a to-do list. Now, here's something that I'm going to go a little bit more in depth with as we talk about this, but there's something called the Eisenhower matrix. Some of you guys may have, have seen this. Do first, schedule, delegate, don't do. Urgent, urgent, but someone else can do it. Important, but not urgent. Not important, not urgent, right? You guys have seen different variations of this when you're creating your list. One thing to remember, most of the things that you you deal with, most urgent matters that take up a lot of your time aren't real important. And most important things aren't as urgent as you think. Most important things, you got a time to be able to handle things and they only become urgent because you avoid them to do other stuff. I mean, you want to become more efficient, that right there. You guys seen that um, or heard that saying, eat the frog, right? Learn how to eat that frog. No, nobody's seen that, really? Some of you have. All right, I'll, I'll find the little meme. It, it's one that my choir teacher in high school, I remember, I still remember that, uh, a picture that she's got. Let me find that. Let me see. Um, you can only focus on one thing at a time. Yeah, so, and, and with the multitasking, what Curtis was talking about, you want to, and I'm going to talk about, well, I'm going to talk about that here in a second. Hard to know what is reasonable is feels reasonable is often not enough to get enough important things done. That's true, but you've got to learn yourself. Um, What I mean is not just learn for yourself, but learn yourself, right? So as I'm giving you, we're going to give you strategies to become more efficient. We're going to give you stuff on, you know, health and exercise and diet and things. And we're going to give you, you know, items for your content. Here's where you have to learning yourself when you become clear about who you are in this level of self-awareness, you've got to look at things and go, okay, is this something that is going to slow me down because I'm scared of it, because I'm a little bit nervous, because I'm worried about what someone else is going to think, and I'm giving them and their thoughts priorities over what I should be doing? Or is this something that really is going to derail me because, you know, that needs, and then maybe that's something that needs to be delegated. But what is reasonable, and this is where people get caught up as well, is, you know, my reasonable isn't going to be your reasonable. You know, what Curtis is capable of isn't the same thing as Sally, and it's not Denise, and it's not Michael, and it's not Kevin. Everybody's a little bit different. 
your capacity to deal with whatever reasonable is will increase as you do the work. But it won't if you allow yourself to be overwhelmed with busy nonsense. You know, and I've used this example before, but guys, if you're spending three days to decide on a domain name, you're just fooling yourself and you're being silly. Because even if you pick the wrong domain name, for crying out loud, a domain name's 12 bucks, right? Get over it, right? Oh my gosh, I've been posting content, posting content. I posted the wrong thing. I posted something on my personal page. It's supposed to be on my business page. So what? Post it on the business page again. <clears throat> you know, I posted because I'm getting ready to launch the, the new funnel. So on my Andrew David business page on Facebook, I posted one this morning that isn't the most perfect one. I've got a coming soon banner up on my, um, for the banner to kind of let them know, start to build a little anticipation. And it's not really the one I want. My, my guy's going to work, rework the image. I'm going to change it again, probably in four hours. But I did it anyway. Like, you know, I'm not going to sit around fretting and going, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I'm going to wait for four hours to get something done. No, I said that I was going to do that this morning. I took the one that was there. I just boom and moved on, right? Get stuff done and don't try to multitask as much. And so here's something real simple uh, as far as that goes. Um, next, tweak your time management practices. Whatever you're doing now, if there's something that needs to improve, then improve it. So blocking and chunking is one way of doing that. And what they're talking about is blocking time out uh, for similar activities. That goes to what Curtis said a minute ago, what I was talking about with multitasking. You can't really handle more than one thing at a time, not efficiently. And when you switch, so if I'm in the middle of writing content or working on my funnel or I'm writing a report from work and I stop to answer a text or answer an email or do something else, in order to get back into the flow state, hopefully you're working at a level of productivity that's a little bit higher. So maybe you get up occasionally into that flow scenario where it's just rolling, right? Athletes call it the zone. We'll talk about how to get more frequently into that, how to duplicate that process so you can make it happen more frequently. But it takes as much as 15 minutes to get back to the mental flow that you were at before you let yourself off doing something else. Guys, you've got to be efficient. So start blocking and chunking out that time. So I'm not answering emails during a certain period of time. I'm not answering texts. I don't get up in the morning and deal with someone else's urgent problems through email because someone else's emergency doesn't mean that my whole day has to be derailed. And too many of you are doing that. And especially some of our um, mothers, and wives have a tendency, the level of empathy is much higher naturally. And so there's a desire to do more for other people naturally. I'm not saying some of you guys aren't very empathetic and want to help everybody and caring and all of that, but let's be real. Most of our, most of our women are, are much more congenial in that regard, right? I mean, we can all agree women are nicer for the most part. So, you know, there's this desire to solve everybody else's problems. Stop it. Learning to say no is going to be important. You will, you're going to slow your own progress if you try and solve everybody else's issues. And then the last one, creating the routine you love. I'm going to give you a list of 10 later on today, but look, we're going to, you know, we'll go over things like uh, Michelle had a question earlier um, in, in the Skype chat about morning routines and highly successful people in morning routines. Morning's a great time to do stuff. If you're a morning person, that works awesome. You can become a morning person or not, right? Maybe that's not the best time for you. And that's okay too, as long as you're efficient with your time, right? And every situation is going to be a little bit different. Some people can't do it in the mornings because that's when kids or grandkids, some of you guys are, are raising grandchildren or nieces and nephews, or you know, the husband is the kid. Or, or you're caring for a, a, a sick parent or whatever. And so the mornings aren't a good time. Okay, well, then let's look at another time during the day when I can be efficient, right? Some of you guys later in the afternoon isn't going to work because that's when you've got whatever, you know, fill in the blank. You're still working your job. So you have to do all of these tasks. And so you need to find this is where you've got to learn you. You've got to learn you. And if you learn 
what you're good at, you decide, and now we, we play around with it, and you can be flexible. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be successful, understand you've got to be flexible in, in that approach because things are going to change. Some of you guys have had businesses for a decade, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Guys, it, I promise I bring any one of you guys that have been doing something like that for a while, you would say you've had to adjust. You had to adjust because certain employees came in. You had to adjust because something happened in, in the town or the city that you're in. Advertising changed, right? My dad, when he was a locksmith, all of his business came from the yellow pages. All of it. And when I was in college and I didn't finish, but I remember I was in a marketing class and we came up with a marketing plan and I handed it in. And my marketing plan at the time, remember this is, as the internet was just kind of starting, but all of my business was a little bit of internet and then referrals and referral partners and direct response marketing and postcards and other stuff like that. Didn't really have much as far as the yellow pages go. And the teacher said, if you don't have a yellow pages ad, if you don't you know, focus that your business in that regard and learn how to write a good yellow pages ad, you'll never be successful in business. And I remember looking at him because I had a business that I was using that business plan for. And that same business plan was being used by dozens of other restoration companies around the country doing a good amount of business. And I remember looking at him and, and just thinking, that's why I'm never going to finish this class. Right. And I, I finished it. I got my grade. I walked away. But look, adjust. You've got to be willing to adjust. You're doing something different. So be patient with yourself during that. Right. This process, especially over the next 60 days, and we're going to have strategies and everything. You will not be able to apply every single strategy I give you. And if you try, it's going to be a mess. So don't pick the ones that are going to work. Pick a couple of things and start to become a little more efficient each and every day, a little bit better each and every day. Help someone else a little bit more each and every day. And that's how you strengthen yourself. That's how you become better. That's how you, you take yourself and your business where you're looking to go. So um, get in there, dive into the Google Drive docs. If you haven't already, get your priorities, start to line those up. I'm going to give you stuff for efficiency. Tomorrow, we're starting the content calendar. So I'm going to explain how it's going to work, what's going to happen, and what I'm going to give you. Even if you're not ready to launch yet, there will be elements that you can do. If you have already launched, obviously, I'm going to give you things that you will adjust to yourself, right? There will be some captions and headlines and other things like that. Um, but, you know, some of it I'm going to say here, you know, post something about this with a picture, do this with a video. It's not going to be, I'm not giving everybody all of the content that you're going to need. You are, you are going to have to work a little because we're all adults, right? And like my mom said, and some of you guys have heard me say that, I will, you know, I will teach you, I will walk beside you, I will guide you, I will give you all of the tools that you need, but I'm done changing diapers. So we're all big adults. We, we all will put on our, our big kid pants and we'll get to work. So let's get out. Let's get rock and roll. So sometimes people pause. have what it takes, but they haven't recognized it yet. Just go forward. So what do you need to do? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person that's different and is bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like the phoenixes that you are.